here in this province. Yet this government, led so ably by the Premier of the Western Cape, currently Helen Zilla, and welcome. We've shown the fact, oh, sir. We demonstrated the fact that we could bring a change. This is a province that has shown that even last year, not a single government department in ANC governments received clean audits. Yet in DA governments, departments receive clean audits. We've shown that metric results are an improvement in our province, and we show we give more access and benefit for more people. <coughs> We've demonstrated the fact that business confidence can be increased in this province. This is the work that we do. And whilst things are not perfect, we realize that. But we want to continue to work hard to show the people of this country that actually, where you build a capable state, actually things can develop. And we can build a government that provides work for our people. And within a year under the DA government, since we took over, seven departments have received clean audits. And since then, the gap in the Western Cape and the rest of the country has widened. In the last financial year, the provincial government achieved 80% clean audits. The next best was in Gauteng, which was barely on top with about 52%. Fellow South Africans, it's also become very clear that unemployment in this province is low. Investment is up. And if you want to start a business, I'd recommend the Western Cape to you. Life expectancy for men is up from 59 to 66. And for women, it's up from 64 to 72. Services work. We invest tremendously in public transport. We build infrastructure. We've improved schools. We grow the economy. And now we've managed to do it all through a global financial crisis, even the worst drought known in the last decade. It is no secret. The Western Cape stands head and shoulders above any other province. And most importantly, this is a place where the economic boom has been experienced in the country. I don't think anybody of us, we recognize the fact that the country faces a recession. And that's why in a country such as ours, it's important to build a capable state that can deliver for all the people. As I've highlighted, this DA government is not perfect. This province is not perfect. There's still a lot more work to be done. We've still got a lot more work to do in making sure that for citizens of this province, we make sure they're safe. Which is for me, having read the recent crime stats, makes me worry and makes it something that is of deep concern to me. Here, the national government needs to do more to ensure that the ratio of policing and citizens is improved. It's not good enough that our people go to bed at night worried about whether they'll be a victim of murder, of rape, of the crime that takes place. It is a deep and a profound concern for me that even still today, that that's some of the highest murder rates occur in this province. So we need the best government that will take on the national government to ensure that we address the situation. Six million residents in this province, simply for them, count on the DA for saving them more. And we have to prove to the other 50 million South Africans that we're the only alternative government in South Africa. And it's going to be crucial as we go towards Gauteng and the Northern Cape. That's why the job of the Premier of the Western Cape remains one that is important for our prospects as a party and important for South Africa. The person elected for the Premiership of 2019 will build from an incredible platform of good governance laid by the DA's team over two terms and the team led by Premier Helen Zilla in the last decade in building that Cape of state. As a province that delivers better services, a better future for every citizen in this province. So in announcing today's candidate, I have no doubt that we've chosen someone who is equal to the task in building on the successes, but also speeding up delivery. As I've highlighted that still, unemployment, whilst it's the lowest in the country, is still not good enough. More must be done. We want more of our people to find work. And we want to be able to be the province that leads that job. Of course, the candidate that will be announced today will have tough competition because after 2019, we'll have, we're working to get two more premiers. So the competition is going to be stiff. 
Gone are the days where they just compete with the ANC. I think it's clear that they've won that battle. Now we've got to make sure that we fight the battle to win against other DA governments. As we started to compare Cape Town and Joburg and Chwane and Nelson Mandela Bay, these are competitions that we, in the DA, we pride ourselves at saying who can do the best for the people, who can deliver the best for the people. And so without doubt, ladies and gentlemen, with more work to be done, it gives me a great privilege and a, and a pleasure to announce that the DA's candidate for Premier here in the Western Cape in 2019 is none other than Ellen Windy. I firstly I also want to acknowledge I want to acknowledge Tracy, who is Ellen's wife, who is sitting here in the audience. Hello, Tracy. Good to see you. And I thought it would be important for you to be here so that you can kiss your husband goodbye. <laughs> the next nine months, he's certainly not going to be at home much. So I thought, uh, let me give you your last date as a couple and then wish you the best. But Tracy, I know many people sacrifice in this job and so I wanted uh, on behalf of the DA to appreciate the sacrifice in advance of the work that is going to happen. What is undeniable is the fact that we're going to be crisscrossing every street, every corner, every community to ensure that we increase the electoral support here in the Western Cape. I want to say that Alan Windy has the confidence of his colleagues, the provincial leadership and ultimately the federal executive. I want to also acknowledge the fact that the provincial leader here, Bonginko Simatikizel, who was also a candidate for the position, has pledged unequivocal support to Ellen in his gracious and as a testament to his caliber as a leader and the strength of diversity that the DA has. And I think, sir, that is incredibly admirable. And I'm proud of the Campaign, campaign 2019 has already begun. To speak a little bit about Ellen, Ellen has served in the provincial government for a number of years. He was elected to the provincial legislature in 1999. He served as the finance chair and the executive committee member uh, with the Democratic Party. He served as the chief whip, as the official opposition in the Western Cape legislature and as the DA spokesperson on environment and plan. Ellen also became the Minister of Finance, Economic Development and Tourism in May 2019, shortly after the DA won the Western Cape. And his position still holds today. His ministry now goes by the name the Ministry of Economic Opportunities, reflecting our focus on jobs and economic inclusion. So ladies and gentlemen, it's the only ministry that I know you can walk off the street into the office. I have been there myself on what they call here terrific Thursdays or first Thursdays or some Thursday. But what's good about it is that it's the most accessible ministry and so I think ladies and gentlemen without doubt, whilst we're spoiled for choice in picking candidates and I want to say David Mania is also here who has also stood for the candidate and welcome David, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. I think what we just, without doubt is that, ladies and gentlemen, it would be fair to say that I am here to introduce to you the Jobs Premier of South Africa. This the Premier has delivered more jobs than any other, well, the Premier candidate who's introduced more jobs than anyone else in the Ministry of Economic Development. This province has expanded its unemployment rate at 22.5%, is now more than 14% below the national average. And for this simple, simple reason alone, you are well correct to call Mr. Windy certainly the jobs premier. He's done so by removing red tape, he's done so by investing in the right infrastructure, and ultimately he stands by the principle, if you eradicate corruption, you offer policy certainty, you can ensure that the economy grows. I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, Alan Wendy's track record is one where he's introduced 640,000 new jobs under his watch, benefiting every community. He's passionate about internships, particularly for young people who need work and experience to get their foot on the jobs ladder. 
And I believe with a, with a track record such as this, South Africa faces a new challenge. And I want, at the end of 2019, when his term, when we go into the elections, let's compare jobs record for all premiers, uh, premier candidates coming up in South Africa. Ultimately, his team is going to do everything possible to increase the, the, the vote here in the Western Cape to ensure that we govern with an outright majority and ultimately continue the work that we've done here. I also, along with that, want to introduce another proud South African, one who served our party with great distinction even here in the legislature. But he's now availed himself through a very competitive process to stand as mayoral candidate or mayor in the city of Cape Town. Ladies and gentlemen, after much deliberation in the party and a very good process, it also gives me great privilege to introduce to you the next mayor of the city of Cape Town, which is none other than Dan Plato. Dan has demonstrated incredible commitment and integrity in the community. He brings a wealth of experience. He served in the city before. Uh, he's also been in serving in areas Eitzach and Ravensmeet. He continues in his, uh, he's continued incredibly in his work uh, uh, around social upliftment and poverty alleviation. And as you know, Dan has already served as the mayor of Cape Town. He's served with distinction and he's left the city of Cape Town on a high note with part of his team being pivotal in hosting a very successful 2010 World Cup and the Cape Town having the best run, the best run city in South Africa. He's gone on to become the Provincial Minister of Community Safety and ultimately we see he's continued his fight in fighting against crime, making sure our people know that if anyone is going to be an activist to make sure there's more policing, that there's safety in communities, Dan is that. He's implemented innovative new crime fighting projects in this province and in fact, if anyone walks the talk, is in the streets, he, Dan Plato, has been there. He's introduced an incredible program on walking the bus program to keep children safe in our communities. And for eight consecutive years in his department, he's received a clean audit. And now for three years in a row, he's been nominated as the best run provincial department in South Africa. Speaks only of the incredible muscle and team that uh, Dan brings to the city of Cape Town. I know in fact he will put his heart and soul into making sure this city runs well, that he loves so much. He will unite, he will lead, and ultimately he will deliver. And I'm sure you'll join me today in wishing him the best of luck in his new journey in a not an entirely new role as mayor of Cape Town. So fellow South Africans, everybody that is here, this is why the DA is the only alternative in South Africa we're the party that believes in the dream of one South Africa for all. And I'm grateful to introduce to you two candidates who have served with great distinction. One who will serve in the provincial legislature and another now who will serve in the city of Cape Town in none other than Ellen Windy and Dan Plato. And with those remarks, I want to thank you and certainly look forward to an incredible campaign. Go. Thank you very much. Thank you to our national leader. Ladies and gentlemen, to the media, we're now going to open up for questions and answers, and then we will also have session for personal interviews. I'm going to number you as you put up your hand, so just remember your number, please. Anybody who wants to ask a question? Yeah. Um, one. Anybody else? Two, three. So that's the question, so I'm going to start at one. Varda. Uh, the question is to the leader. Um, obviously, there's been lots of confusion following his announcement that he's thinking about entering the race. Um, it caused an uproar in the city of Cape Town. I don't know if it was for the better or the worse. But maybe just briefly on that aspect, we'll change or played the role in changing your mind. Secondly, um, uh, to the new Premier Ken, um, just, we'll still 
talk a lot about race. What makes you perfect to rule everybody? Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, thank you to Mr. Maimani. Uh, you, you mentioned in your, in your ad uh, address that that this would be the best, Western Cape is the best to take on, to use the word take on, national government. Is there an adversarial relationship between the government of the Western Cape and national government? And then what happens to cooperative governance then? Sure. Uh, good morning, Jan Geiber, News 24. Well, I would like to get more um, insight into the process that was followed for selecting the, the Premier, given what has happened over the past week. Um, can, if you can explain what steps were taken since the, the uh, um, announcement was withdrawn that, that you, you're interested. And secondly, what was the consideration uh, at each stage? What, what um, I mean, I can put it, um, what, what was the thinking behind each step? Thanks. Um, my question is, uh, there will be two vacancies in the provincial government. When will they be filled? Thank you. The last question. Did you get the last question? Only one vacancy. Only one vacancy. Let me, yeah. Let me respond um, to the first, and maybe it might help uh, join the two questions. Firstly, the DS Constitution makes it possible that the leader can stand in any list across the country. A request was made for me to consider standing. And I think it's fair enough because I'm animated by ensuring that the DA grows all across the country. It's a very crucial aspect and I want to make sure we do well here in the Western Cape, in Gauteng, in the Northern Cape. But equally so, I think what persuaded me, which was the question, was about making sure that we continue our national project. It's a very important one. It's also crucial to make sure that as we campaign right throughout, whether in KZN, Gauteng, Northern Cape, everywhere, that we meet, we meet those strategic goals. I have a job. My absolute animation is to build that one South Africa for all. And it will be something that I will never stop pursuing. And it's something that I will give my life to. So certainly, I have absolute confidence in the candidate that we've chosen. The process was a rigorous process. Someone asked me a process question. Um, in the DA, here's what makes the DA an incredible organization. The DA is incredible in that we don't, we open up public service, and I just want to clarify the word, not public rulership, there's no such thing public service, we open it up to everyone. Let me give you a very good example. Herman Mashaba wasn't uh, active in politics, but when the opportunity was presented for us to go campaign in Gauteng and in Joburg, we said Herman Mashaba, he put his name in the ring and he could do it. This is not about saying whatever role you play in the party is an automatic reward for you to go and go into public service in whatever role that is. That's what, and that's why in the DA will always go through that. And the process is such that anybody can put their name on the table. We've asked each and every candidate to present for us a plan for government. What would it look like in the next number of years? And I must be honest, we were spoiled for choice. We had three, uh, we, had, we had four, five candidates who six stood candidates, six candidates who stood here. The three that I'll speak about are the ones who were ranked the highest in Bonging Kosi, David Mania, and Alan Windham. Presented incredible plans about the future of the Western Cape. What would it look like? Those are all assessed independently. They all appear before a selection panel, which interviews and speaks to all of them about what the future would look like and what that means. And I think having gone through the process, that process delivers an outcome. And that outcome was Ellen Windy at the top of that process. And I'm grateful for the fact that even the two candidates who are here said, we respect it, we stand, here's the person who can talk, and we'll support them going forward. Which I think is what makes the DA what the DA is. We don't say, if you fulfill a particular role in the organization, you must then go and serve it in government. 
We want to separate party and state to make sure that in the state, let us get the best plan, let us get the best vision for government and take the matter forward. So that was, in essence, the process. And that's what, for me, is a very important thing that we always safeguard in the DA. You, Lester, you asked the question about competitive, cooperative governments. <coughs> now, the Western Cape is part of the national framework. It's part of the South Africa, and it's proudly so. It works hard. Our constitution defines not tiers of government, but spheres of government. And those are all mandated for from the constitution. The constitution of the Republic of South Africa says the province does this, the city does that, and national government does this. Now in cooperative government, you have to ensure that each sphere of, or each tier of, if sphere of government fulfills its mandate. If national government is mandated to provide bulk water supply, it has to provide bulk water supply. And if it fails, we must challenge that. You can't say in the interest of cooperative governance that you must absorb the failures of another sphere of government. We must ensure, sorry, this thing has, oh, there we go. So you mustn't absorb because you are not constitutionally mandated to do that. Just like a province can't run the defense, the province also doesn't run police. And so when I say we've got to take the fight more, we've got to stand strong, but that, what I mean is, let's ask the national government to do its job because it's in the constitution for it to do its job. And I think part of cooperative governance is saying, in the interest of citizens of Nyanga and Kailicha and Kukulit, where we're finding incredible crime hotspots in Levendale and Mitchell's Plain and many communities, yeah. national government must do its job in making sure that the proportion of policing and residents is increased. So that's a constitutional framework, and I think the Western Cape government must lead that fight to ensure that the people of the Western Cape can know that they live in a safe community, which is what I would want for every citizen in this country. <coughs> I don't know, there's a question Thank for Ella. Thank you very much, uh, Wada, for that question. I think you said what makes me perfect uh, to rule. Well, first of all, I want to say that I am really humbled. I am honored that uh, my party has given me this opportunity. Uh, and I say I'm humbled and I'm honored, but uh, I think it is a huge uh, opportunity and it is something that I will put my full weight behind. But it is not about ruling. It is about putting a team together I think in the past, and I, as a government, I think in the last 10 years, we have really shown that we have built the foundation, we have built the governance, we have then taken this province to different levels. The leader, thank you very much, uh, talking about the jobs created, but I think in all portfolios in this province, lots and lots of work has been done to really make this province a different place. Now, this privilege that's been given to me and, and this honor that's been given to me today starts off with a campaign because, of course, you can only deliver once you've won an election. So we are going to have to crisscross this province with a team, and I say a team again. It's not about an individual. It is about putting teams together. I think I've shown in my own portfolio that that's what it is about. It's about teams, and we will take the excellent work that the DA has put together and achieved in the last 10 years and build on that to really make differences. There's a lot, there's a lot of work to still be done out there in the Western Cape. And uh, I will definitely make sure that we put that team together, that we uh, fight this election to get a better percentage than we had the last time around, that we build on that track record, on that foundation, and we actually make this an even better place to live to work, to play, to go to school, to live your life out as best as you can in the opportunities that government and the private sector together can create. So, Yangan, to your question about vacancies, I, I mean, obviously there's a, you know, this, this microphone is ungovernable. 
Um, I think what, what, is, what is going to happen is that obviously the process for filling of those vacancies will begin. There's only one that I'm aware of at this point in time. And so that process will begin in the same way. We'll open it up, make sure that... Uh, How? Halala. Diabule and Kosma. Which government? See, this changeover is happening already. I think what's going to happen is that we'll fill out those vacancies. That process will begin almost earnestly, and then uh, it's a list process, so we'll make sure the best candidate then goes on into whatever sort of government that we're discussing. So that was a process question. Take one last round. Last round. Any burning questions? One, two, three, four. We then close the questions and then we will arrange five and then we will arrange one-on-ones after that. My two colleagues, Anthony, will help you with the one-on-ones. Okay, one. That was number one. Jason. Yeah. I didn't see any people candidates. Yeah, uh, Jason from the Argus. I didn't see any female candidates in this process. I just wanted to know maybe um, you as a leader and your leadership collective, did you guys perhaps motivate more females to take over or to to be in the running for this because it's an all male um, um, it, it's all male candidates for mayor well, well, there was one female in for, for mayor and for premier it seems it's only male um, what, what, what did you do to get more females in? Mm, good question number two just behind Afternoon, also team of Soon Kurant. Um, I've got two questions. The one is to the leader and the other is to the Premier. Um, to the Premier first, have you started considering any candidates to replace um, MEC Dan Plato? And then to the leader, um, you've mentioned that you're considering being the Premier candidate in the Western Cape. Has anyone consult, uh, has anyone whispered in your ear to be the candidate? And then yesterday, you've that was announced that you will no longer be standing. Who advised you not to stand? Uh, and this is Mike from the Sunday Times. Who you said there was a request that was made to you to stand? Can you tell us by whom and when was this request made to you? Uh, you also speak of a national project. Can you tell us what is this? What, what is this national project uh, that you guys speak about? What does it entail? And lastly, you spoke about the incredible plans that were put forward by the three candidates. So, um, I don't understand how these people present these plans, and you still avail yourself after their plans. They were not good enough. The fact that you did avail yourself says something about whatever plans they, they put forward. So, why did you avail yourself or consider after this process, and why did you withdraw? Uh, Lindsay Denklinger, Eyewitness News. Mine's just a question on process, um, not within the provincial government, but in the city council. Um, Mr. Plato will have to take up a seat there. Has Patricia DeLol now confirmed that she's not only stepping down as mayor, but giving up her seat um, to, to make space? Or how, how will uh, Mr. Plato be sworn in as a councillor? And has the party given any thought as to what role um, Mayor Patricia DeLol might play in the party in the future? There was a request made um, for you to run as Premier, like everybody has pointed out. Um, what were the reasons given for that request um, that you run? Was there a certain lack of confidence in the people who had been selected as the top three candidates? And then um, also about the, the candidate, the mayor, or um, the person, Mr. Dan Plato, who will fill Mr. Thaville's seat. Um, why was Mr. Plato selected when, um, in the statement, the DA said that all the candidates were excellent? So why was uh, Mr. Plato um, selected above those candidates? Um, yeah. Thank you very much. I think let me start with your question first. Because when you've got five candidates, you clearly can't pick all five. We've only got one mayoral position. It's the luxury that the DA has, that you end up with five candidates who are excellent and who are really could do the job. And they all presented incredibly well. And I'm grateful that through the process, eventually you get through nomination and then we select the best candidate. I think, uh, obviously, now we've got to work out the process as to how we fill the seat. 
Mayor Dalil has confirmed publicly that she will be stepping down as mayor the 31st of October. So once that takes place, we'll then be able to go through the process of voting and electing. And then, uh, can I get? Uh, sorry, I don't. I don't know why this. This. Okay, let me stand backwards. Maybe that's. Uh, so, so, so the objective here is that as soon as we had to go through the process of the selection panel, once that's now done, we'll deal with the vacancies in the city. And there are multiple permutations as to how we can fill that vacancy and do an exchange. It doesn't even have to be Patricia Dill's actual seat. It can be, uh, we can, you know, there are multiple processes as to how we do it. So. Third time lucky. Let me speak to you personally about my decision. Uh, maybe this is a question that Andy Siwe and a few other people have asked me. When I took over as, as leader of the DA, I always committed myself to say that the DA has to grow everywhere. We have to ensure that we increase our electoral outcomes. Those electoral outcomes are obviously starting from the All right, we're going to cut out of that uh, DA media briefing uh, where various announcements on leadership have been made. And we're going to go for a short break and have more news for you. The plans for government are unique to each candidate, but are consistent with the manifesto of the DA. You can't create a plan for government that's inconsistent with it. It has to say to us, we want to be a competent government, we want to be a capable state, we want to make the state much smaller. We have a favor towards a market-based economy. We'll do whatever we can to eradicate corruption across all systems. So the questions that were put before the candidate needed to articulate and be consistent with that manifesto. So each of the candidates presented what I thought were excellent plans. It is plans that I would sit back and say, we would execute those in government because when they go into government, they represent the democratic alliance. Having said that, it was also important, which was a consideration for me, is that with any plan, you need to make sure you are in government. You need to make sure that we grow the support, because that the Western Cape's contribution is also important for the national project. And that's why, in part, when the request was made to me, was that how do we increase the votes in the Western Cape so we can achieve our national objectives? That was the consideration, and that was the drive. Because what I don't want is that the Western Cape, and I've said this to Ellen, so it's no secret, we're sitting at 58% here. We must work hard to make sure that we grow beyond that. That objective must remain. It doesn't change. And as leader of any party, the last thing you need is for in any way, electorally, that you start going backwards. So that was the consideration. And I gave it much thought. But it's not only that we must grow in the Western Cape. We must grow in Gauteng. I've committed to say that we're going to grow. We've got a great candidate in Solim Sumanga there. We've also got a great candidate in... And the beauty of the DA, as someone asked me, is that now we will announce the last two premier candidates tomorrow. And when I look at the team and its entirety of premier candidates across the country, I'm grateful for the fact that of those, you'll have effectively two white South Africans, two black females, and five black South Africans. Across the country. So that is, in essence, in many ways, confidence in Ellen Wendy as the candidate. Somebody asked me the question about females. I want more females in public life. I think uh, South Africa, we need more. 
I don't believe in quotas. I don't believe that you can simply just engineer and say, you need so many females, so many this. I'm grateful that Shana Fernandez stood. I think when our lists come out uh, all across the country, there's more females that are applying in those. But I really do want more. I'm interested in increasing that number of females to stand for public life, to serve in public life. And without quotas, the DA has, in has produced incredible leaders who are females who have served, none other than, obviously, uh, even Patricia DeLille herself in uh, the Premier of the Western Cape, Helen Zilla, and other leaders. So I think it's a very, very positive thing that takes place in terms of the number of female candidates that we've got going. And I'm grateful to see Helen French, who is here, who has served in the provincial government and continues to serve in that government. So we want more and we'll certainly get more on the go. And you see what those, I've, I think I've covered what the national project is. It's about going to retain and increase our vote in all three of those projects. Western Cape, Northern Cape, and Houghton. Those are the goals. Um, I think the city council have spoken about what the process is, the reason for the request, the vacancy, and I think I've covered all the questions. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I'm most appreciative of your time here, and you can take one or more questions with the candidate physically. Thank you. Thank you to our leader. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to all the Democratic Alliance leaders who are here to unite behind Minister Alan Windy. And ladies and gentlemen, we will focus now as Democratic Alliance on our project to unite South Africa, one South Africa for all. I thank you very much. Thank you.